Before discussing my thoughts on Halloween ends, I want to take a step back and consider this entire new trilogy as a whole and scratch my noggin at how bafflingly inconsistent and incongruous it has been. I'm sure you've all seen the Halloween storyline flowchart with the original Halloween at the top and all of the different storylines that have splintered off from it. You've got the sister angle, you've got the thorn trilogy, you've got the zombie stuff, and now we've got the Bloom trilogy. Lori's alive in some of them and dead in others. She's Michael's sister in some, but not in others. You've got two reboots, although Halloween H2O was kind of a reboot too. Then you have Halloween 3 season of The Witch on an island unto itself and looking better than ever, really. I think all three new Halloween films from the Bloom trilogy could occupy their own separate limbs of that fractured ancestry. All three films share facets of one another, although they kind of retcon certain elements from the one that preceded it. For instance, in the 2018 film, they talked up the fact that they were stripping away all of Michael's supernatural elements, simplifying the story and returning it to its roots. But in Kills, Michael is the Terminator, able to brush off multiple gunshots and having his ass severely beaten with baseball bats, two-by-fours, and an iron. In Halloween Ends, Michael's an old decrepit man waiting to die while slowly turning to mold down in the sewer, occasionally dragging people down there to kill them, eat them, play Uno, all of the above. In fact, quite a bit of kills seems to have been retconned in Ends, aside from the death of Karen and the whole mob thing, which... Let's face it, was the best part of that movie. Disney did the same thing with its Star Wars trilogy, but these films are a more severe example of deciding to do a trilogy, yet making it up as you go, with no clear through line, direction, or end game. It's great that Jamie Lee Curtis came back and that John Carpenter was involved, and there are moments that I like in all three movies, but now that it's all said and done, at least for a little while, the only successful thing this trilogy seems to have accomplished, other than making a lot of people rich, is dividing the fan base and creating a ridiculous amount of toxicity. Oh, and Halloween 3 looking good on that island unto itself? Don't be surprised if Bloom charts a course to that location and goes all Christopher Columbus on Season of the Witch. Now that's freaking scary. <laughs> I'm going to keep this review as spoiler-free as possible, but if you've seen any of the trailers, or all of the trailers, then you've seen about 75% of this movie already. It's been four years since the events of Halloween Kills. Lori and Allison have seemingly picked up the pieces and moved on with their lives. Lori is writing a memoir, and Allison is working as an aide in a doctor's office. However, it's the people of Haddonfield who won't let them forget about the past. In fact, most people seem to blame them for the past. Lori in particular is held accountable by Haddonfielders for quote-unquote teasing Michael into committing the bloodbath he orchestrated four years ago. It's kind of like Michael's absence has caused the hearts of Haddonfielders to grow fonder. Not of the boogeyman, but for a boogeyman. Enter Corey Cunningham. Corey ranks about a notch above Michael Myers when it comes to Haddonfield's most resented resident and Lori is only a notch above him. This is how the two connect. Soon sparks fly between Corey and Allison, but Corey is hiding something. See, he's got a secret friend, an elderly gentleman who he's recently made the acquaintance of. Want to take a guess who that is? Go ahead, take a stab at it. I'm just going to go ahead and say this and get it out there. The best thing about Halloween ends is Corey Cunningham. Now, I know I've been goofing around a lot lately regarding Corey Cunningham and being hashtag Team Corey. Corey Cunningham, played by Rowan Campbell, is the only character here, actually the only character in this entire new trilogy, that really has an arc, who is sympathetic, complex, and likable, even when he's not supposed to be. Campbell's performance as Corey is quite good. Corey goes from chipper kid with a bright future, to sad downtrodden pariah, to there's hope again, to going down a dark path. And whatever the scenario, Campbell kills it. The whole imposter angle that I'm sure you've heard about is a little played up. I wouldn't consider Corey to be an imposter, necessarily. 
There's a theme running through this movie about how evil is infectious. For instance, Michael's evil has seemingly infected the town of Haddonfield and its inhabitants, driving up the crime rate and so forth. The town is even depicted as less of a quiet, safe suburb and more of a grim, grimy little dive. And that's because of Michael. There's a scene that takes place down in the sewer, and if you saw any of the trailers, then this isn't a spoiler. Michael grabs Corey by the throat. There's a flash of images as if Michael is looking into Corey's mind or his soul. I don't know, but he can see that there's darkness there. Corey looks into Michael's eye, and it's almost as if something is passed on from Michael to Corey, imbuing Corey with a killer instinct, let's just say. It's a killer instinct that Lori recognizes almost immediately, a killer instinct that Allison finds very appealing. Women love a bad boy. Am I right? So if you've crossed Corey or Allison for that matter, you're screwed. Because if Corey can't get you, his heavy breathing buddy will. Now, does any of that sound like a Halloween movie to you? No, that's because Halloween Ends is barely a Halloween movie. As a matter of fact, Halloween Ends reminds me a lot of one of those direct-to-video Hellraiser sequels. Now, hear me out. I don't mean in terms of quality. What I mean is that Ends feels like a movie that didn't start out as a Halloween, but was refurbished into being a Halloween. Yet, even after being refurbished, it's still not quite a Halloween. Halloween Ends really should have been the middle installment of this trilogy, having Michael vanish after the events of the 2018 film, only to be reactivated by Corey and returning stronger than ever, that would make more sense. But what's really going to break a lot of hearts when it comes to Halloween Ends is how the film treats Michael Myers. Let's just say Michael is showing his age here, and he makes some not very Michael-like decisions. This isn't Michael's movie, the way that Kills was. This isn't Laurie's movie, the way that 2018 was. Halloween Ends is Corey's movie which makes it even more dumbfounding that it's the final act of this trilogy. You've almost got to take the Halloween out of Halloween Ends in order to appreciate some of the film's finer points. Now, is Halloween Ends a good movie? I'll put it this way. I really liked the character of Corey Cunningham. And because Corey Cunningham is front and center through most of this movie, I liked most of this movie. But the real question here is, is Halloween Ends a good Halloween movie. Out of all three films, End seems to have the clearest vision, feels like the least tinkered with during the editing process or altered by reshoots. Ends has a consistent tone throughout. It's well paced, and while it's not the bloodbath that Kills was, we get some impressive bloodshed nevertheless. The demise of the DJ was my personal favorite, although the blowtorch looked the most painful. I think this is Jamie Lee Curtis's best performance of the trilogy. Although she was good in the 2018 film, she's looser here, more natural. She's a survivor, not a closed-off survivalist. She's a caring and protective grandmother, not a half-cocked crackpot ready to go after Michael with her guts practically hanging out. Lori actually has purpose in this movie, which is a big step up from Kills. Andy Matichak's Allison felt underwritten and a little flat to me. She's definitely going through a quarter-life crisis, although it's not fleshed out enough to really resonate. Maybe some of her scenes were left on the cutting room floor. I don't know. Halloween Ends took chances and tried something different. I can give it props for that. But taking these kinds of chances with the final installment of a trilogy, that's a big risk. Taking these kinds of chances with the final installment of a trilogy that's part of the Halloween franchise, that's certifiable. So do I recommend Halloween Ends? I'm torn. How do I recommend a Halloween film to a Halloween fan, but tell them to check their Halloween fandom at the door? It's better than Kills, in my opinion, and I had more fun with it than the 2018 film, although the 2018 film is more of a Halloween movie. I've got a headache. I've done my best to avoid social media up to this point, but I've still managed to gather that... Halloween Ends is uh, not being very highly regarded, and I'm sure it will go down as the most controversial entry in all of the series. And I know how passionate Halloween fans are. 
because I've been one since I was a kid, but that didn't prevent me from receiving death threats based on my review of Halloween Kills from last year. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I don't receive some interesting fan mail over this review too. And I wasn't going to bring this up during my review, but I'm going to anyway. Much like another formerly controversial entry in another beloved franchise, I wonder if time will look favorably upon ends the same way it has Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. If you've seen Halloween Ends, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and have a say in what content appears on my channel. Join me for monthly live streams and much more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.